So in a couple of previous videos, I mentioned some of the downsides of using F-Droid and an alternate client called Droidify. If you haven't seen those videos, I will link those down below. So the method I'll be demonstrating today, I came across in a forum post, and I think it is the ideal option. So this method is the least convenient to set up at first, and updating apps has a few more steps involved, but it does remove the need for any additional app between you and the developer's code. So this method uses an RSS reader, and RSS stands for Really Simple Syndication, which I did not know before making this video. They've been around since the late 90s, and it's a standardized, computer-readable format that can be used to monitor and aggregate multiple online sources into a single RSS reader. So it removes the need for you to check multiple sources and lets you just check one, which is the RSS reader. So while it's commonly used to track websites you follow for newly published content, such as a blog, we're going to be using it for a bit of a different purpose. So all the apps you see in F-Droid and Droidify have their source code hosted somewhere, and for a majority of those apps, that's GitHub. So using our RSS reader, we're going to be monitoring the feeds of the apps on GitHub that we want to download and manually install updates as they become available. So the RSS reader that I decided to use is called ReadU. It's open source and it has a material theme design, which I'm a sucker for. So the first step in the process is to download and install our RSS reader. So to get that, you can either follow the link in the description box down below or on the screen now, or you can go to your search engine of choice, type in GitHub space read space U, and it should be the first result. So once we get there, we're going to scroll all the way to the bottom to the section labeled releases here. And once you get there, we're going to tap on the bold releases. Scroll down again till you get to the section labeled assets. And here we have a read you dash numbers and letters dot APK. Since we're manually installing from GitHub and we're not going to be using F-Droid or Droidify to actually get this app, we need to download the APK manually and install that. So go ahead and select that. Click download. Depending on the browser that you're using, you might see a warning because we're downloading an APK. I trust this download, so I want to download anyway. Once that finishes downloading, go ahead and select open. And then select install. And once that completes, select done. Swipe up and go to our home screen. Swipe up again to go to the app drawer. And then open read you. Quick screen about terms of service and privacy policy. Agree. And here's the default interface. Pretty plain, pretty simple. Looks great. Let's start adding some RSS feeds to it. So since we're going to be manually monitoring for updates, the first one we want to add is the actual GitHub of our RSS reader. So you should still have that tab open. Go back to your browser. And on the same releases page, what we're going to do is copy the URL. Once you have that copied, go back to the RSS reader. Click the plus sign in the upper right hand corner. You click the little clipboard there, or you can manually paste it in the box. And now this part's important. We're going to go all the way to the end. Take your cursor, put it there, and at the end, add .atom. Atom is an RSS feed standard that's followed. That's what GitHub uses. That's why we add .atom at the end. And once you have that added, click search. It should find it. Again, another important part on this screen is enable allow notifications so that when a new version is detected and the RSS feed is updated, we will get a notification on our phone so you know to update it. Once you have that, you can click subscribe. And we can now see down here under the default group, we have release notes from ReadU. Due to my OCD, I don't like that it says release notes from ReadU. So I'm going to long press on that. Where it says release notes, tap on that. And you can just delete the release notes from this app has a space in it, so I'm going to put a space there. Rename it to whatever the app name is. Click Confirm. And we have now successfully added our first RSS feed. So just to give a quick overview of the interface in ReadU. So on the right here, we have All. On the center here, we have Unread items. And on the left, we have Starred items. So we're going to go back to the center circle icon. We can see here we have nine unread items. If we click on ReadU, we see the items that are unread. I'm going to go ahead and mark these all as red since we just updated the app. We don't need any of these notifications that are unread. And we can now see that unread has no unread items. So like I mentioned in the intro, this can be a bit tedious at first to set up. I'm going to go through one more example, but for any open source app that you have on your phone that you originally got from F-Droid or Droidify, you're going to have to go through this method to set it up. So the next app I'm going to demo is called Newpipe. It's a pretty popular app. I use it. A lot of people use it, I know, to watch YouTube on their mobile device. 
So let's get that one set up. So the method I recommend for finding the actual GitHub link for the app that you want is we're going to be using the FDroid website to get that. So head on over to f-droid.org. Sometimes this site might be slow for you. Um, I know for me it is. Actually, right now it's going kind of quick, so that's kind of nice. But an alternate site that you can use is they have a mirror at cloudflare.f-droid.org. And so if the main site's ever slow for you, I usually go and use the cloudflare.f-droid.org, and that mirrors a lot quicker than the main site. So now that we're here, we're going to scroll down to the bottom. Underneath here, we have Find Apps. Like I said, I'm going to be looking for New Pipe. So search for New Pipe. I don't want New Pipe Legacy. I want New Pipe. So select that. Scroll down. You're going to get to this section here where you see Author, License. What we want to click on is Source Code. So we're taken directly to the GitHub page. So we're going to scroll down until we get to the bottom. We're going to click on, again, the bold releases text. So now we're on the releases page again. This is what we want. So go copy the URL in the search bar up top. Once you have that copied, head on back to redo. Click the plus sign in the upper right-hand corner. Again, paste in the link. And like the first one, we need to go to the end again. So drag the cursor. and add .atom. Click search, should find it. Enable allow notifications, and then select subscribe. So we're currently on the unread tab, which is why we only see the new pipe one here. So I'm just gonna go back to the all, so we can see our list. So we have read you, then we have release notes from new pipe. Again, I'm gonna rename this for my OCD. Click confirm, and we now have new pipe here. So marking everything as red, like I mentioned in the first example, you can either do that now for every app you add, or you can go through, add all the apps, and then mark them all as red at once. But again, I'm just going to mark them all as red right now. Mark all as red. And that's it. So now just as an example how it's going to look when you're installing an app, or when you're updating an app that you currently have, we're going to pretend that NewPipe has an update. We got a notification. So hey, there's a new unread message in the NewPipe RSS feed. Select new pipe. Here's the update, 0.23.1. We can see the version number there. We're going to tap on that. And then once you get here, what you want to tap on is this version number at the top. That's going to take us directly to GitHub. Here we have the release. We have the change log. This just says everything that's new that has changed. It's a log of changes. Then we're going to keep scrolling down until we get to the assets section. Once you get here, you're going to be looking for the name of the app, version.apk, that's what we want to download. Select that, download. Again, warning, it might be harmful. Once that downloads, click open, install. And the app has now been installed or updated, depending on if you had it installed already or not. So yes, this is a bit more manual. You have to keep an eye out for the notifications. You have to manually install them. It's not as seamless as Droidify or F-Droid, which can update and install apps in the background. But we are downloading directly from GitHub instead of relying on that third-party repository. One other thing you will notice is that you will get updates a lot sooner using this method as compared to using the F-Droid repository. Updates in there are a bit lacking as they take some time to actually get to the repository. Using this method, you're getting updates as soon as the developer pushes them out. So before I talk about some issues that I came across using this method, I do want to show you how to back up your RSS feed once you have it configured. This will help you so that in the future, if something happens to your phone, you have a backup of the feed and you don't have to go through this process manually all over again. So inside the Redo app, I feel like this feature is kind of hidden. You need to long press on the Redo text at the top. It'll open up your file manager. And from here at the bottom, we can see redo.opml. That's the feed format. We're just going to click save. So now that you have the backup saved, make sure you save that somewhere secure that's not on the device in case you lose your phone and you have that someplace you can restore it if you need to. And if you do ever need to restore it, the way you do that is same method as adding a new RSS feed. Click the plus the upper right hand corner. Instead of pasting the feeder URL, you're just going to click import from OPML, select the OPML backup, and you'll be all set. 
So I've been using this method for the past two weeks, testing it out and seeing how it works. And there's a couple things that you should be aware of. I wouldn't really call them issues, more like scenarios. So let me show you those. So the first one is with Geometric Weather. That's the weather app I used. Thank you, subscriber, for telling me about that. So let's pretend we got a new notification for Geometric Weather. We're going to select that. And, you know, here we see it. 3.102. Again, we're going to tap on the title to go to the GitHub repo. And so what we see when we get here is the tag pre-release and we don't want that. That's kind of like a beta version or whatever you want to call it. We don't want to install that on our device. The only versions we do want to install are ones that have the tag latest. So we can see here version 3.013. We see the green latest tag there. That's the one we want to install. So if you see the pre-release tag, don't install that version. Just wait for the next version that is tagged latest and go ahead and install that one. So while we're on the Geometric Weather app GitHub page, there is something else you might notice under assets. We see quite a few versions that end in .apk. So depending on the developer or the app, some have one version they release and others, such as Geometric Weather, they release a version specific for Fdroid, Gplay, and then we have underscore pub, which more than likely means underscore public. So in the case of this, we don't want the Fdroid one, we don't want the Gplay one, we want the public one. So that's just something to look out for and to make sure you download the correct one. So now for the next thing to watch out for. So I use OpenVPN to connect to my house. So let's say that OpenVPN has an update. I select OpenVPN. Again, I select the most recent version. Select that. I get to the GitHub page. Here we have the APK. I'm going to select that. Download it. Download anyway. Once that finishes, select Open. And now here comes the part that you're going to have to watch out for. So I select Update and it does not install. Now, why could that be? So we're going to jump over to my computer quick. And if you watched my first video on Fdroid, I talked about how Fdroid signs APKs with their own keys. And on Android, for security reasons, if an APK has a different signature that it was signed with when you try to install an update, it's going to block the install and you'll see an error message like we saw just now. So inside this folder, I have the version from GitHub, which is the one that starts with ICS and the one from the Fdroid repository, which starts with DE. So using this command, we can print out the certificate that corresponds to the key that this APK was signed with. So first, the one from Fdroid. We can see here the owner, fdroid.org. So this shows that this APK was signed with Fdroid's key, which is part of the issue with using the Fdroid repository that I mentioned in my first video. And now if we take a look at the one that's directly from GitHub, and so we can see here, this is signed by the actual developer of the app, not by Fdroid. This is one of the benefits to using the RSS reader method is you actually get the APK signed by the developer's key, not by the Fdroid key, which if that's compromised, that could lead to issues as multiple apps are signed with the same key. So long story short, in order to install the version from GitHub, we first need to actually remove the version on our device from Fdroid. So now if we go, I'm gonna long press on OpenVPN Click the little eye icon, uninstall. So before you click OK to uninstall the app, make sure you back up any settings or data inside the app you might want to keep. Removing an app from your phone will delete all data associated with it. So once you make sure you're all set there, go ahead and click OK. That app has now been removed. So we're going to go back to our browser. I'm just going to go to my downloads. I'm going to click on that again. And now I'm going to click install. So the app has now been successfully installed. So we now installed the version from GitHub that's actually signed by the developer, not Fdroid. And you only have to go through this the first time. So now that we have the version that's signed by the developer installed, any future updates we get from our RSS reader will all be signed by the developer and they'll install just like any other update. Another thing I came across with an app I use, which is Nextcloud, they release a new developer version every single day. So if we look at the feed here, we can see yesterday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday, so that means every day I get a notification for Nextcloud. So it's more of an annoyance than anything, but it's really not that big of a deal. You'll get a notification every day. I just, you know, don't do anything with it because it's a developer version. And then once the actual main latest version comes out, I'll go ahead and install that one. And then the last thing that I came across, as I mentioned, most apps host their source code in GitHub, but there is an alternate you can use called GitLab. And with GitLab, I wasn't able to find any RSS feeds of their releases. So that means we can't add it to our RSS reader which is unfortunate. 
There aren't many apps that host their code in GitLab, but if you come across one that does, I don't really have a great solution for that at this time. Again, if someone comes up with a solution down in the comments, I'll make sure to add that to the pinned comment. So check that in case there's updates there. So on a different note, I received an email from a subscriber recently who said my content is good, but it's a bit difficult to follow, and I tend to agree with them. So I think new videos with new ideas are great, especially if you're already in the ecosystem and you already have a de-Googled device. But if you're new to all this, it can be a bit tough to know where to start. Privacy and security are always changing, and videos are not the easiest thing to update. So the best thing that I could come up with is a masterclass that you can get for the low cost of 18 coffees per day. I'm just kidding, that was a joke. Please don't click away from the video just yet. But what I will be doing is posting a page on my website that'll be in an outline or syllabus format with videos that you should watch, you know, from beginning to end, start to finish. I want to get a phone. This is the OS to install. This is the app store you should use. It'll have different options on there depending on what you're looking for. And I think that'll be a little bit easier to follow along with than just trying to find random videos on my YouTube page. And then similar to my life, it is a work in progress, so please don't expect that page to be perfect. I'll post updates on the community page on YouTube and ask for feedback there. Additionally, I might post some questions on Twitter about it. You can follow me there at Side of Burritos. Yes, that was a shameless plug. So any feedback you have on that idea or the content of this video, please feel free to leave that down below in a comment or send me an email to the address in the description box.